Good afternoon. I am State Attorney Amira Fox. Today, justice has been served. Minutes ago, Joseph Zeiler was sentenced to death for the 1990 murders of 11-year-old Robin Cornell and 32-year-old Lisa Story. He received two death sentences, one for each of the victims. I hope that today's sentence allows a new direction of healing for the friends and family of the victims and that you can rest easier knowing that this evil monster will never again walk free and will sit on death row until he is put to death, paying the ultimate price for his atrocious crimes. I stand here today with many, many people who have been with us for so many years, 33 years, as we work together as a team on this case. Jan Cornell, Robin's mother, Randy Richard, Lisa Story's boyfriend, our Cape Coral Police Department Chief, Tony Sizemore, and his excellent team. I want to thank Assistant State Attorneys, Dan Feinberg, who couldn't be with us today, but Stephanie Russell and Abe Thornburg for their magnificent, excellent, dedicated, and meticulous work on this case over many, many years. I want to thank my team, our trial assistant, Lindsay Gade, our state attorney's office investigators, Steve Tharaldson and Steve Scalici, our victim advocate, B. Scalici, our former investigator, Jennifer Griffith, who's joined us here today. They as a team worked so incredibly hard on this case to bring it to this day. With evidence spanning decades, putting it all together and getting it ready for trial with these tremendously successful results. I want to stay, say a few words about the Cape Coral Police Department. Without them, we would not be standing here today because they threw their heart and soul into making sure that we could all stand here together today. And I'm so pleased to see not only, of course, our great police chief, Tony Sizemore here, but also some of the detectives who worked on this case over the years with dogged determination to bring us here today. Several of them even testified during the trial, as you all saw, saw. and we have with us t former Detective Todd Everly. Where did you go, Todd? There you are. <laughs> and we also have with us former Detective Christy Jo Ellis, former Detective Charlie Garrett, former Detective Kurt Grau, and former Detective Bennett Walker. Thank you to all of you for never letting this go. I also want to give a big shout out to a former police chief, Rob Petrovich who was very much involved in what all of them did, which was make sure that that evidence, that crucial evidence in this case, didn't just sit there, that it got sent out for retesting every single time there were advances in DNA science and technology. And that's what solved this case. This case shows the dogged determination by family, friends, and by great law enforcement can bring the conclusion that we had today. I also want to thank the jury in this case for their diligence and their focus and attention throughout this trial, both the guilt phase and the penalty phase. Jan, I want to express my most immense respect and admiration for you for you, Robin's mom. You have been with us and law enforcement through every step of this for 33 years. And I myself feel in my heart how wonderful it is to stand here with you and with you, Randy, to see this hopefully 
closure to you. You have both shown incredible bravery, strength, and Jan, you the drive to find the person responsible for killing your daughter and Lisa Story. I really hope and pray that you have a renewed sense of peace, both of you and your families and loved ones. So many of you joined us today in your lives after today. Jan, I hope that you would now like to say a few words, if you would share with us your feelings today. Come on up. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank this. Because without this, we wouldn't all be here. The dedication, the compassion, the hard work, the everything that was put in it's nothing like TV, I promise you. <laughs> nothing. But nothing can take the place of hearing the words today that justice for Robin and justice for Lisa has happened. He has received the ultimate punishment that the state of Florida can give, which is the death penalty. He will never see a free moment he will never hurt another individual on this earth. For that, I cannot be more grateful. And again, I have to go back to this team, all of them, who have stood by me for years during some very dark moments. <laughs> and thank you for always giving me respect and letting me be a voice for my daughter and my friend because I have done it and I hope very proudly. I love them both and I never ever want anyone to forget either one of them. They were here, they lived, some evil monster cut their lives so short, so unfair. But now they have peace and now we can let them have peace. Just thank everyone, all of you. Thank you. Yes. And now, Randy, would you like to share with us a few words about sure. Lisa? Sure. Like Jan said, I would. I'd like to thank the Cape Coral Police Department, all the particular individuals that hung with this case so long, to the prosecution team, to the administrators that did their job, to the investigators that went day after day, year after year, never given up hope. Thanks to all of them. Thanks to the system that it worked. Thanks to everybody that showed support to me, my family, Lisa's family. It was a long, hard road. Words can't express the gratitude that I feel. I hope that Lisa and Robin are, have a little bit more of a smile on their face today. Thanks to all of you, too. Thank you, Randy. And now, Chief Sizemore, would you please join us? Give us your thoughts today. Thank you so much. I will be a little brief. It was so eloquently put by um, State Attorney Fox. But just to echo a lot of the thoughts here today, first and foremost, I'm so grateful that this day has come for Jan and for Randy. And justice is here for Robin and Lisa. And from a Cape Coral Police Department and Cape Coral community perspective, I just want to acknowledge the work that was done by nearly a dozen detectives, forensics personnel throughout a generation of law enforcement to do it. And it consumed their career, it consumed a good part of their personal life, and even into their retirement life, they're still here consumed with it. So it's a, just a, a tremendous day for justice. Um, and I was reminded of a quote that I said to, to Jan probably 15 years ago 
we always did anniversary reminders of the case and it was a particular frust particularly frustrating day for Jan. There was ups and downs and was she was really advocating to keep it in the spotlight. And I told her that we were on this case very, very passionately, very aggressively, and I told her it's not a cold case, it's simply an old case. And a few weeks ago at the verdict, she said that to me when I walked in. And it was just very, very gratifying to hear that, that she held on to that, and it was just a testament to the way that she advocated for her family and for her loved ones. And I really want to thank the state attorney's office for putting on a master class on how to prosecute a case that was challenging. It certainly was not a slam dunk. Uh, there were a lot of obstacles, and because it was as old as it was, the evidence had gone different iterations of science advancement over the three decades to keep it there and then to make it um, consumable for the jury. It was just a, a real testament to their professionalism, their skill, and their talent. And when you put both of those together, what they did, law enforcement and the prosecution, they ensured that Mr. Zeiler will never again walk the streets of Southwest Florida. And then you combine that with the jury and with the judge what they've done is ensured that soon enough he will never walk the face of this earth and it will be a better place for it. And I thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much, Chief Sizemore. As your state attorney, I can tell you that no length of time will stop justice from being served here in Southwest Florida as we have seen today. The actions of this despicable defendant were cold, calculated, premeditated, and heinous, atrocious, and cruel. The aggravating factors, we argued. The death penalty is the correct sentence for this monster all day long. The right sentence for these horrendous, unthinkable, and unspeakable crimes for that despicable monster, who if anyone ever had any doubt, showed himself and his true nature of violence and evil today, earlier in the courtroom. Now I will take any questions and aided by Ms. Russell and Mr. Thornburg, if you would come on up. Our two excellent trial attorneys here. What questions can I answer? Yes. So I'll share with you all that I moved here in 1990, and this crime had just happened, and I started as a young prosecutor then, and. It stuck with me all that time. It hurts your heart, this case. All our cases do. But this one, with this little girl and Miss Story, both murdered and raped and brutalized in such a fashion by such a monster. To see 33 years later, this justice served, I, I felt chills in the courtroom today. Uh, uh, being in the system this whole time and then watching this happen today, it was a, it was a huge day today. Yes, Claire. Sure. In that, in that Come on, and then I'll answer your question, Claire. I don't know. I'm elated. I'm besides myself. I don't. I mean, everyone should be focusing on this woman here. She did it. It is. It's impossible to put into words. You put a lot of time and effort into something and see it come to fruition in this way, and to have all these people so happy with the result is more important than that. And yeah. you know. That's right. right. Also, we're only as good as the evidence we're given. Mm -hmm. I cannot say enough about Cape Coral Police Department and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. They did this. We just presented it in court. We tell a story about That's what they it. did, so they're the ones you should be thanking. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, thank you. Um, for kind of all of you, we know anyone who is in that courtroom knows how horrific and terrifying the details of this case were. Um, I'm sure it's hard for you to hear. They were hard for everyone to hear, but obviously for Jan, the hardest. Maybe. How were you all able to, you know, support each other through having to help Jan 
They're like family. <laughs> you want to take that first? Yeah, why don't you? <clears throat> these people, all of these people, literally took me by the hand when this is, was literally dumped on them. <laughs> I said, did you guys get the short straw? <laughs> But they literally took me by the hand and they walked me through every process of this for almost seven years. I was never in the dark about one thing from the minute this system got this case. They kept me informed of everything that was going on. And whether I liked it or not, they explained it to me and again, not like TV. <laughs> it, there's a lot more to it. But the brilliance of watching them put it all together where it needed to go and watch justice unfold in that courtroom before my eyes is something I didn't know if I would ever see. But I did. And it's because of them, all of them, all of them standing right here. It's because of them and a lot of you that on my worst days were my best friend still. And here we are. So Mr. Goh, Chief Sizemore mentioned how year after year, um, you know, he would greet um, Ms. Cornell. And, uh, so what was that like, you know, since the moment you got the DNA hit, you know, as you got to the trial, which was seven years later, um, can you walk us through through that, you know, roller coaster of emotion? So I can tell you at the state attorney's office, the day we got, I remember very well the day the results, the hit on the <coughs> DNA came in, and I can tell you there was elation in our office that we would finally be able to, for Jan and for Randy, be able to hopefully give them today. And we knew from that time we would uh, put an excellent team of prosecutors on the case and that we would get where we are today. So I remember that day very well, and I'm, again, so pleased to be standing here watching this conclusion of it. And for you, Ms. Fox, you were mentioning just earlier that uh, you had just moved when this happened. I had. How has this case, you know, throughout the years, how has this helped you grow professionally, personally, you know, connecting with the families uh, throughout? So uh, every, t every time we see a case like this, and all of, us, all of us do this job because we want to help the community, help the public, keep Southwest Florida safe. And when we see something like this, where somebody has done such awful harm to innocent people, I think that's what inspires me. I know that's what inspires my team and all of this team who work in law enforcement to do what we do. Uh, to be able to stand here today and say, even if it's 33 years, we will get justice. And we will work as hard as we ever can towards it. And I think that's how all of us feel who work in the system. I have two questions. First for Jan and Donnie. How does it feel seeing the sea of people standing behind us today? With everybody <laughs> smiling? <Yeah. laughs> Amazing. Amazing. They're feeling the relief that we are feeling at this moment. And the gratefulness. I, I just can't, almost can't explain it. It's just been a dream for so many years, but here we are. And to know that he will never be free is enough, is enough. And I will take it. <laughs> and Jan, of course, one more question for you. Um, of course, you know, people like you've lived this for 33 years. You said earlier today that your life was never the same after walking and seeing that gruesome scene. However, a lot of people have been following the story. When they see the story tonight, what is one thing you want them to remember from your daughter and your family sister? Right? I want them to know that you can't let evil win. No matter how hard it is and how painful and how broken you are, because you're broken beyond belief when someone walks into your world and does something so horrible. You have to recover. You have to move on. And in their case, I felt like I needed to be their voice. And I wasn't going to let either one of them down. 
I wasn't there that night to save either one of them, or at least hope one could get away. But for 33 years, I was not going to let them down. I was going to be their voice every opportunity I could to remind this community and law enforcement that we needed to find him. And here we are. The last question I had was for Chief or any of the investigators, you know, how did you guys feel after getting this so long in the making? Oh boy, who wants to take that one? There's so many of you. They all pointed at me. You've been elected. <laughs> It's a very talented group because they all pointed. Right to <laughs> Having worked with that particular group and the, that group of individuals, so I know them personally, I know that it's twofold. When that day came, it was elation that all of the fears that everybody discussed, he wasn't dead somewhere and we would never find out. Um, it wasn't all done in vain. It was an elation that 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 part of or that chapter had closed but it was also a little bit of a pit in the stomach if I'm not you know hiding the truth that now the real work begins there is an unbelievable amount of work that has to be done from that moment till today right now and we didn't do it alone obviously we did it with the best team in Florida but I take that team right there with anybody that answers it Sizemore, yes. What is the most challenging case you've seen, you know, since you've worked here? Or, you know, are there other uh, court cases that may, this may have set a, a precedent for? Um, it's certainly the most unique case because of, of the duration in which it was worked. Um, we, I can tell you that this shined a light on the advocacy that we have for our victims, the same as it does for the state attorney's office. But there are plenty of victims in the system and in, in their caseload and in our caseload that what you saw under that spotlight of working, we're doing that with all of our cases right now. Can we answer any more questions of anybody? Well, I thank you all for coming this afternoon and for following this and bringing attention to cases such as these so that the community can understand um, how hard our law enforcement and our team works when we have a case like this or any case that we handle. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>